Hi, I'm John Ainsley from Doulos. I'm going to talk about RTL versus TLM and AT versus LT. The context for these abbreviations is the OSCE System C TLM 2.0 standard, but I'm not going to talk specifically about that standard, rather I'm going to talk more generally about the concepts and help you understand the distinction between RTL and TLM and between the AT and the LT coding styles. So I'm sure you're familiar with RTL. RTL is an abstraction level. It abstracts away from the details of a, detail of a digital hardware design. In particular, it abstracts the structure of the design by describing the registers and the combinatorial functions between those registers. And it abstracts timing by just dealing with state changes on clock cycle boundaries. So RTL is about abstracting structure, logic and timing. In contrast, TLM, which stands for Transaction Level Modelling, is all about the abstraction of communication. So, in a transaction level model, we abstract away from the pins and the individual events and phases that constitute the communication between blocks in the digital system, and instead deal with communication in more coarse-grained terms. So a collection of individual events and pin wiggles occurring over some period of time can be abstracted into a single transaction. And a transaction typically has a name, a set of attributes, a start time and an end time. And the key point about transaction level modelling is that it accelerates simulation. So comparing RTL with TLM side by side, RTL models communicate by wiggling pins over a period of time. Transaction level models communicate with simple function calls, and that makes transaction level models much faster, typically several orders of magnitude faster than RTL for the purposes of simulation. However, if you're trying to understand TLM for the first time and get your head around it, it's important to realise that when we compare RTL with TLM, we're not really comparing apples with apples because they abstract very different things. RTL, as I've said, abstracts structure and logic and timing. TLM abstracts communication. Of course, a transaction level model also has to describe functionality. And functionality is best captured in a behavioural model, simply because that's the best match in terms of simulation speed. You can take register transfer level models and have them communicate at the transaction level, um, but because the mismatch between the simulation technologies there is so extreme, it's usually rather counterproductive. The RTL is just a bottleneck. So the game within transaction level modelling is to take relatively simple abstract behavioural models, which could just be C or C++ programs, and integrate them together within a concurrent simulation environment, like one of today's, today's typical mixed language simulation environments. And that's done by bringing the behavioural model into a communication wrapper that deals with all the communication, concurrency and synchronisation within the simulation environment. So a communication wrapper would take a behavioural model and whenever a behavioural model needs to communicate with another part of the system would wrap up that communication behaviour in terms of a transaction and possibly annotate timing information onto that transaction in order to bring the behavioural model into the simulation environment. Now let's look more specifically at the OSCE TLM 2.0 standard. 2.0 introduces terms such as the blocking and non-blocking methods and the loosely timed and the approximately timed coding style. And what I want to do for the remainder of the presentation is to, to bring these terms into the discussion, help put them into context and help you understand the distinctions between them. So to really make some headway here, it all boils down to, to one key question. Do you want to keep every model in your transaction level simulation synchronised to a common simulation time? Or do you want to allow models to run ahead in their own time? If you want to keep every piece of code synchronised to a common simulate, simulation time, a common clock, that leads you down the path of AT modelling and the non-blocking transport interface. If you want to allow models to just run ahead, blast ahead and run in their own time, that leads down to the path of LT, loosely timed, coding style, temporal decoupling and the blocking transport interface. With the approximately timed coding style, each process 
runs at a specific point in simulation time. And the significance there is that a process is modelling some activity in the target system and the simulation time when the process runs corresponds to the actual time in the target system when the corresponding activity occurs. So System C processes will keep themselves in lockstep with simulation time by making System C calls to the wait and to the notify method in order to consume simulation time. So with AT, transactions get annotated with delays and because the, the characteristic feature here is to keep everything synchronised with the System C simulation time, those transactions would cause future events to be scheduled to make sure the corresponding activity occurs at just the right point in time. And in order not to skew or throw off the timing of the process that's sending the transaction, the transaction would typically make use of the non-blocking transport interface to not block the flow of control of the initiator. In contrast to that, the loosely timed coding style doesn't attempt to keep everything synchronised with a single global simulation time. Rather, processes are allowed to run ahead in their own time. And the objective here is to simulate as fast as possible and just get the job done. So in a loosely timed model, we want to execute all of the system functionality as fast as possible. And that best suits the use of the blocking transport interface. So with blocking transport, the transaction is sent from an initiator to target. The target does whatever it has to do and only returns control back to the initiator when it's got an answer. But loosely timed doesn't mean untimed. In a loosely timed simulation, we're typically simulating a multi-core SOC where we have multiple CPU models or instruction set simulators, and each initiator still needs to be given a chance to run. Initiators need to take turns, and that means keeping some sort of track of how much time's been consumed. Also, we still need to model timers and interrupts that are, that are common in systems these days. And that again requires some notion of time. So the, one of the key technical innovations here with the loosely timed coding style is temporal decoupling. And temporal decoupling contrasts with a cycle accurate simulation. So a cycle accurate simulation is like a relay race where the runners keep passing the baton from one to another. So an each initiator gets to run just for one clock cycle in a cycle accurate simulation. And at the end of the clock cycle, the initiator passes the baton to the next initiator that runs for its turn. So each piece of work that's to be done in the model happens in just the right clock cycle, but there's a lot of context switching and that consumes lots of CPU time and slows down simulation. With temporal decoupling, once an initiator starts running, the initiator is allowed to carry on running and actually run as far ahead as it likes in terms of the time that's being simulated within the target system. And the objective there is to minimise the amount of context switching in the model and therefore maximise simulation speed. So a temporally decoupled initiator will execute functionality on and on into the future, running ahead of the simulation time clock, and it's limited only by a quantity known as the quantum. So the quantum represents the um, level of granularity, timing granularity in the temporally decoupled simulation. Each initiator is permitted to run ahead up to a quantum boundary, and then the next initiator gets a turn. But so by setting the um, size of the quantum, you can affect a trade-off between simulation speed and timing granularity. A really large quantum gives a significant simulation speed up and a corresponding reduction in timing accuracy. So, if you found this brief presentation useful, I represent Dulos, we're a training company. We can offer you training in TLM2 or System C, System Verilog, VHDL or Verilog. If you'd like further information, then do check out our website, www.dulos.com, where you'll find lots of interesting technical resources, including some free TLM2.0 tutorials and a protocol checker.